Now that we know how to create geometry, let's explore how we can modify geometry. In the next chapter, we will look at the tools that change geometry that we have already created. These tools allow you to generate very complex forms with very little effort. So before we can explore the modify tools, let's first create some geometry to modify. Using your rectangle tool, we're going to draw a square at 3 feet by 3 feet. So remember, we can click once to start, move our cursor towards the top right corner of the screen to suggest a direction, and then type 3 apostrophe comma, 3 apostrophe enter. And now our square is at exactly 3 feet by 3 feet. So the first modify tool we want to take a look at is the move copy tool. So activate the move copy tool up there on your large tool set. That's the four red arrows pointing in each direction. Hover around on your geometry. Notice that you can auto-select edges and surfaces. So we're going to just click once to pick this surface up, and then click again to put it down in the top left corner of our screen. Now, we have exercised the move command, and now we want to take a look at the copy command. So there's just one little extra step we do. So hover on that surface and click once to pick it up and tap control or option on the Mac to toggle the copy command on. And then we're going to just type in 5 apostrophe enter. So I've copied that down the red axis at exactly 5 feet. Now we can also make multiple copies or arrays. And we just need to add one extra step at the very end of that chain of commands there. So we're going to click once to pick this up tap control or option on the Mac and then just kind of scoot your copy down here on the red axis and at this point I can let go of the mouse and I'm gonna type in 5 apostrophe enter and then I'm gonna type in 5 X and so you can see that down there on the measurements dialog box and when I hit enter I get five copies so we're gonna make that copy five times so we can create multiple copies or what we call an array now, a little more advanced feature of the Move Copy tool is if I was to make a copy of this guy straight down. I'll click once to pick it up, tap Control, and I'm just going to put it down just a little bit below. We can also create a copy and array, but do it based on divisions. So if I was to make a copy of this square all the way to the end of my screen, I can also specify how many divisions go in between those copies. So we're going to click once to pick this guy up, tap control or option on the Mac, and then I'm just going to move my cursor all the way to the end and click to put it down. Now without invoking any other command, I can type 8 divided by enter. And we get 8 equal divisions between the copies. Now let's take a look at the rotate tool. In the rotate tool we can use to rotate geometry. Click on those two red arrows chasing each other up there on the large tool set. And again, as you hover over edges and surfaces, notice that the Rotate tool auto-selects. So I can position myself over a square, click once to set the center point of rotation. Now I need to set a reference point. So I'll just click here on the green axis once, and then now I can define the distance or the degrees or angle that I'm rotating. So down there in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see in my measurements dialog box, it's telling me that this is right at 45. So I'll click there. Now, be careful not to confuse the Rotate tool with the Protractor tool. That's a common mistake to make. So when you actually want to rotate geometry, be sure to grab that Rotate tool. Now to finish taking a look at our Modify tools, let's open up a class file. Under File, choose Open and we're going to navigate to our SketchUp Basics class files folder and we're going to open up the EDU tutorial follow me. So open up the EDU tutorial follow me.skp and choose open and I'm not going to save any of these changes and now we have our self-paced tutorial for the follow me tool and this is a way for you to explore on your own there's some on-screen cues and text that will guide you through a couple of the different ways to use the follow me tool and I'll walk you through them right here as well. So first off the most basic way to use that follow me tool is to pre-select the path and then second click on the follow me tool up in your large tool set and then the third step is to click on the profile that you want to extrude along the path. 
So I'll click once, or I'm sorry, I will activate my selection tool, click on my path, and then go to my follow me tool, and immediately click on my profile. And you can see that creates this donut shape. So it extrudes a profile along a path. And let's try that again. We can also create a sphere. If you pre-select the path, which in this case is that circle. So previously we used uh, the edge of a circle. Now we're using the surface of a circle. We pre-select our path, click on the follow me tool, and then click on our profile. And that creates a perfect sphere. Next, we can also create, uh, or we can also use the follow me tool to manually extrude a profile along a path. And here you can see we have this little miniature house. And if we want to extrude this gutter along the edge of the roof, we could just use the follow me tool and click on this profile. And then we steer it. And you can see how it turns the corner for us. But we have to be kind of careful as to what we're doing here. And if we're steering it around, we might accidentally go up the roof. We need to kind of reset that and make sure that we only go around the edge of the roof that we want. For the gutter. So then I'll just come all the way around here and sometimes you need to reposition your view to turn that edge and there we go. Okay so we'll just come back to there and click and that's how we can finish that guy. So we add this gutter to our roof. So it's a little bit tricky to use the follow me tool manually. I only suggest using that uh, when you just have a real quick follow me, I always prefer to pre-select the path and then click on the follow me tool. Let's keep going here. We also have a uh, subtractive method of modeling with the follow me tool. So here you can see if I use my selection tool, we have a profile and we have our path, which is going to be the top. So uh, we're going to pre-select the top surface of this block click on the follow me tool and then click on this profile and in doing so we can use this follow me tool as a subtractive modeling method. Alright let's take a look at these pipes as well. Uh, this one's kind of fun. We're going to use our selection tool and we want to pre-select by triple clicking on all of this this path here. So when I click I go one two three and I can select all connected geometry go to my follow me tool and then click on this circle and that will zip that guy right around there so uh, pre-selecting the path is the first step click on the follow me tool and then click on your profile alright so now let's take a look at creating a chess piece so here you can see that we already have a chess piece all kind of created or at least the profiles created and again we want to pre-select the path click on the follow me tool and then click on the profile and that will create a chess piece. Okay, and then finally, we have this all set up so that you can make your own either chess piece or column. So when you're using that line tool, make sure that you're very careful that you're starting on edge, you're drawing on the face, and you're staying on that green and blue axis because it's very easy to get off track and draw off into 3D space. So make sure that you're paying very close attention to uh, drawing on that face, which means you want to draw on the blue and the green axis. Uh, what I often do is I'll draw a basic path and then come in and add some detail to it. So I might add a an arc here, and maybe I'll add a an arc here as well. And then I can use my eraser tool, and I want to trim out everything that I don't need. So with my eraser tool. I don't need that, I don't need these two edges, and then furthermore, I don't need this edge. So there's my profile, and now I go back to my selection tool and pre-select my path first, click on the follow me tool, and click on the profile. And that will spin that guy around and create some very complex geometry very fast.